it's a simple dish that's full of flavor. We're talking ceviche, and Tangy Patton of Good Taste TV is back with some of her local favorites. I told you earlier this is something that was first introduced to me here in Houston yeah. during Cinco de Mayo, and I can't wait to talk more about it today. Such a great dish for the summer, too. It is the perfect dish for the summer because, I mean, let's face it, it can be a little oppressive out there, <laughs> yeah. you know, today in particular. But there's something really nice, and it's almost like a little energy boost, you right, know? Right. It's not the hot, heavy food that'll weigh you down, and it just kind of keeps you going, and it, it's perfect for the summer. It was, and I brought some of my favorite places, uh, my favorite ceviches from a mm -hmm. fantastic place in Houston called Pacific Coast Tacos. It already smells beautiful. Oh, they do so many different varieties, and that's what makes it so fun. So they've got two locations, one in the Heights, one in Sugarland, and it's a local couple. Lindsay uh, and Lincoln oh. Ward are the owners, and so they have a Sugarland and the Heights, and I brought you some of the fun ones yeah, I wanted you to try. It. We have to go ahead and try this out. So what are we talking about? How okay. we actually serve this up? Because they're serving these beautiful glasses. This is a good way to actually entertain, too. Oh, it's an easy way to entertain. It's very easy to make. A little later in the show, I'm going to show you how to make one, and it's super easy. You'll be doing it all summer long. This one is called Coconero. Okay, so, so you talk, I taste. You got it. Yeah, <laughs> you got the best part. So this is lump crab meat, very fresh shrimp, coconut cream mm. and it's done with the habanero mango sauce Ooh. so you get the creamy sweetness of the coconut cream and then that little habanero gives mm. you a little kick in there but it's a great melding of the sweet and the creamy mm -hmm. and the habanero right and i love the crunch in there too yeah texture this is beautiful i love this here and then you have these other two up here also beautiful. All, also beautiful and all very different. So this is the ceviche mixto. And it's a great mix of lump crab meat, again, fresh, shrimp, octopus, mm. flounder, and this is in a spicy cocktail mix. So this is like just your fresh fish flavors, and you get that spice, of course, with the cocktail mix. Now, all Tangie, the this is going to be my first time trying octopus, so you're, you're <laughs> going to have me doing the first on the show. Hey, I love this. <laughs> ceviche is a first for you in Houston, and now mm. octopus. This is really good, too. I love how juicy it is. Yeah. Really yeah. refreshing. And this is. also is beautiful. Okay. Pacific ceviche. So at Pacific Coast Tacos, their flavors are all coastal. You'll get some tropical influences thrown in as well. This one has shrimp, flounder, mango, pico de gallo, and um, avocado. Now, you can add octopus if you want it, but you don't have to. So this, again, in its... I love ceviche. It's such a protein hit, you know? Right. Um, these things are not loaded with carbs. The little crunch you may get in a tortilla or a plantain chip is not going to kill you on a carb thing. Um, but you get the protein, your energy, and they're really healthy. I mean, you've got lots of fruits and veggies in these mixed in, too. I'm tasting that spice that you talked about. It's starting to give me that kick that I need. <laughs> yeah. That's going to wake you right up for the summer. Hey, you're, nice from, you're from Louisiana. <laughs> you can handle a little spice, and I love Joe. all the seafood, too. Exactly like you said, being from Louisiana, I'm knowing all of these seafood elements that you have up here, but it's the flavor that's just been right. jam-packed into all of these ceviches, and they're so different and unique in each one. Well, they are, and I, I only brought three. There, mm. There's a variety at Pacific Coast. Now, to wash it all down, I brought a Josh Rosé Prosecco okay, for now you. Okay, now you're speaking my language. Okay. <laughs> I was wondering if you were going to go for this Prosecco or not. Mm, okay, so what do we have in this? What is this going so to do to complement this? I, Prosecco, sparkling of any kind, really, just goes with any kind of food, right? And because there's some fruit components in these ceviches, there's some great notes in this rosé that really complement well. Mm. And it even works with spicy things as well because it's not Uber, it is dry, but it's not so dry that it's competing with anything. The thing is that it being dry, it really does help balance it all out because this is super juicy when you're having this in there. So this just balances out it's just nice. perfect. It's really nice. Yeah, I love that Prosecco. It's an easy one to find wherever you shop for wines. And it's like less than $15. It's a, it's a one of my go-to rosé Proseccos. Absolutely. Now, this is something that's great for a lot of people because you give a lot of information. All of this information can be found also on your show that airs at 530 right here on KPRC. Yeah, now we take you all over Texas on our show. We're actually going to be in Louisiana Come this on, season. Come on, you're yeah. going back to my, the swamp town. <laughs> That's Absolutely. what we're talking about. I love the Atchafalaya swap. Love yes. this. And I'm glad that you actually pronounced it right. A lot of people cannot pronounce it, and I'm glad you got it good. Oh. So high five for you. You got it. You got it. <laughs> Fun so you're stuff. Be back there. 
to yeah. Louisiana all over. You'll see that, That's yeah. But we'll, we take you to restaurants all over. And of course, we do a lot of wines with uh, HEB and we show you some really great vines. And that's the key. Yes. You don't have to spend a ton of money to get a great wine, right? And this is really easy to impress your friends and family for the summer, those backyard barbecues when it's so hot out there. We right? know how this Houston heat is. This is a great way to have a dish just to yeah. cool off and keep it light. You cook some ceviche for your family and they're going to be impressed. There we go. Tangie, <laughs> you always do it for us. And of course, Tangie's not going anywhere. She's going to be back later in the show to tell us how to make a refreshing watermelon ceviche at home. Mm -hmm. We are back with Tangie Patton of Good Taste TV. Today, she has been showing us how to make ceviches, now a watermelon version. And yeah. before we get into this, we got to talk about the show. We were talking during commercial break. You were in production on a brand new season of Good Taste with we Tangie. Are. We've been in production since April. So we've been traveling literally all over the state. We were in Dallas last week. We've been in the Panhandle. I was telling Joe we were in his old stomping grounds in uh, Cajun country. So yeah, we're everywhere. Houston, you name it, Austin. It's such a great everywhere. job. You essentially meet really interesting people with interesting stories and eat a bunch of delicious food. And Derek, th that's the funny thing. Everyone thinks it's all about the food. And, and yes, the food's great, but it truly, truly is about the people. Yeah. And this year in particular, uh, for me personally, it's been very heartwarming. I, these folks have been through unbelievable struggles. And, and honestly, they're still struggling right now, you know, yeah. getting people to come back to work. Um, but yeah, and it's, you, we want you to leave hungry at the end of the show, but we also want you to leave smiling. You know what I'm saying? And feeling better than you did when you started watching. We hope we're inspiring people and uh, get out there, go out and eat. I think Have you're doing meals. just that, Tangi. So yeah, set your DVR as it airs on weekends, early in the morning, Good Taste TV. Early in Houston. We're on like Saturday evenings, lots of shows, but here in Houston, and we're so proud and pleased to be here, uh, set your DVR. We're all busy here anyway, right? Well, you're especially busy. <laughs> we love when you make time for us at Houston Life. The watermelon ceviche, I have never had something like this. Yeah. So talk about how it's created. This is a beautiful dish and the flavors are just perfect for this time of year. Of course it's watermelon season in Texas and this is done with halibut. So I, I want to show you how easy this is. This will be your go-to summer dish. There's just a few key things to keep in mind. Okay. You want to marinate your fish Ideally, if you're one, if you're someone who does not want raw fish at all, marinate it for about two hours. Two is plenty. If you want to go three, go three. But the longer you marinate it, you run the risk of it becoming too flaky and falling apart. And okay. Have you ever had crumbly ceviche out somewhere maybe and you're just like, mm. They marinated it too, too long. long. And, yes. and when we're marinating it, we're using what, a lime juice lime or a lemon juice? juice? And that's actually curing it or sort of cooking it, right? Exactly. And if you taste, lime juice varies. If you taste your lime juice and you think, man, this is just so acidic, I would never even, you know, use it in a margarita or something without adding sugar, add a little orange juice to it. You can tame it a little bit and still keep all the citrus components so that you're still marinating the fish. Okay, that's so, a good little pro tip. I think we have an ingredient list we can throw up on the screen so people yeah. can take a look at what they need to get if they want to make the dish. Does it have to be any white fish? It doesn't have to be halibut? Any white fish. Halibut is an easy one to use because it's, it's easy to work with. Um, you want to chop it into cubes. You don't want them to be too big because you want the fish to marinate all the way through. And of okay. course it picks up the great citrus flavor. So you start with the fish, pull it out of the fridge once it's marinated, dump the juice that you were marinating in. And so just start essentially with your fresh fish, we're right? We're discarding that juice. We're discarding that juice. Okay. And then we're going to add the chunks of watermelon. Mm. And I like to keep all of the components roughly the same size. Uh, it's just easier to eat that way yeah. and, and to present that way. So toss your watermelon in. Okay. Some cucumbers. Persian cucumbers. I love Persian oh, cucumbers. Me too. A little bit of cucumbers. And then you're going to do serrano. We're going to kick it up a notch. Okay. And you'll find you can cut back on the serrano. You don't have to put the entire amount if you don't like a spicy version. And red onion. You know, red onions are not as uh, astringent, for lack of a better word, as regular onions. They're just a little milder and they really do add a nice little layer of flavor. Okay. And then They're pretty too. Juice. Fresh squeeze. Don't, well, if you have to, buy the store-bought juices, but honestly, fresh is best. There's no comparison, right? So squeeze your own juice. That makes it best every time. And I'll, I'll show you some of the cool things to make this easier that I found at Cool Inscom. Okay. But anyway, so use whatever reamer you've got at the house. 
toss it all in. You're going to mix it all together and then garnish. And I've garnished with radishes over here, uh, a little bit of microgreens. You could use a little bit of cilantro, whatever you like, just to make it pretty. Also, it's just such a fun dish to look at. It's beautiful. Yeah, it truly is. It, and no matter how hot and humid you are, you see this, you, you smile, right? Yeah, it looks Screen great. And summer. these little microgreens, where did you say you can buy these? Oh, H-E-B, Central Market, grocery stores have them. Nice, right? It's an unexpectedly delicious combo of flavors. I love it. I love it. And I wanted mm -hmm. to bring out so much of, we eat with our eyes, mm. so you've got the beautiful bowl of food, and then you can do these beautiful, fun things with your table, right? Um, I found these things at Cool and Scum. I absolutely loved them. I thought they were the cutest things. I don't know if you noticed the napkins, but look at the little buttons and the little tassels oh, hanging yeah. off of them. Um, at least go the beautiful uh, ceramic pieces that you can use and entertain with all year round. And this is an electric juicer. Now, when COVID hit, we all started becoming uh, goal-minded with being healthier, right? Mm -hmm. And I bought a hand juicer, and I will never go back. I love <laughs> squeezing my own juice. This makes it easier for you. This is the Smeg brand. They come in a variety of fun colors. It's a really cool brand, yeah. They're great, but... When you get in the habit of having fresh squeezed orange juice, then I'm not saying I hit it every single morning of the week, but I do look forward to it. And it's just a great kick of vitamin C and you feel like you've done something good for yourself and good for your health. Very nice. Very, very nice. And they do a cool and scum have some great outdoor oh, they're just dishes beautiful for summer. Thing. The little bowl, you're, this is acrylic as well. I mean, oh. melt, you can't go wrong. I thought it was glass. No. No. Okay. The, the same line comes in a beautiful, delicate, gorgeous glass, but no, these are plastic. Let's talk about the wine. Okay. Uh, to some of our viewers, this first wine will look very familiar. We just featured this <laughs> for our uh, Wine Club Wednesdays. Yeah, we think alike. This is a great wine. That's probably why you're seeing it, you know, again. It really is. This is a Toronto wine, so this is from Argentini Argentina. Argentinian wines are pretty fascinating because you have the mountains, right, the extreme and mm -hmm. temperatures. Uh, and they make some beautiful wines. This El Origin, uh, the Reserve. A Tarantus is just a great grape. On the nose, you're getting all these florals, and then the flavors are tropical. It's a little fruitier than some wines, but it is by no means a sweet wine. Yeah, it's not sweet at all. No. And I think it goes beautiful with ceviche. And for $9. For $9. This is a great, and, and you know the term porch pounder? Yeah. <laughs> This yes. is a great porch wine. It truly is. It's just a great little summer wine. Now, this is another one I'm absolutely loving. Sauvignon Blancs, or I should say Sancerre's, mm -hmm. are big trending right now. Wines trend just like anything else. So a varietal you'll see trending right now on lots of restaurant menus is Sancerre. And if you look at, you know, over to the price of that Sancerre, you're going to pay quite a bit more for a Sancerre than maybe a Chardonnay. Yes. It, it's gotten a little crazy. This Sancerre Sauvignon Blanc, it just happens to come from a region in the Loire Valley that has a designation of Sancerre, right? This is Sauvignon Blanc from the Loire uh, Valley. It's a terrain, so it's another little region in the Loire Valley. And it's about half the price wow. of what you would pay for a good Sancerre. So okay. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, and we have about 30 seconds too. left, but you have a couple more wines okay. here I want to be sure Well, to get and to. some of these you're probably familiar with. It is rosé season. Uh, I love the Fleur de Prairie. This is on a lot of uh, restaurant menus as well. Mm -hmm. But the Fleur de Prairie, classic Provence-style rosé, just, just beautiful. And, of course, Josh does. We had the rosé prosecco earlier. This is the regular prosecco. And it's, it's delicious, good one. too. And, of course, all the wines I find, you know where. At HEB. We you love that. You got it right. Lauren and Joe, uh, I think you guys have some, some snacks. Tangie, you know we love you so much. It's not just because you bring us lunch. <laughs> It's, it's much it more than, It's much more. Do you guys want to come over and try some yeah. of the ceviche? Come on, come on my invitation. I was going to say, I'm still working on mine right now. Tangie, oh. I have a quick question. If you yes. were to save some of the ceviche, how long will it last in your refrigerator? I, technically, you might get away with it the next day, but honestly, there's so many fresh ingredients in it, right. I wouldn't. I, you know, another key component is you really want to buy the absolute freshest fish possible, mm -hmm. and you want to buy it the day you're going to make the mm -hmm. ceviche, right? Get to know that fishmonger uh, at HEB. He'll turn you on to the freshest fish. White fish is generally, to me, the best to make ceviche with. Um, but the key is mm. very, very important to use the freshest fish. Mm. And I would buy it the day I'm going to serve it. They got the small bowls. I think I'm going to take this one. Uh-oh. <laughs> this I'm is going to be mine. Joe Sands. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, Tangie, thank you so much. It's great oh, to see you. you. Great it's to absolutely see you too. delicious. Good. And just in case you missed any of these steps, we do have the recipe to Tangie's watermelon ceviche on our website, HoustonLife.tv. <laughs>